the German idealists, especially Schelling, called the forms of the great works of architecture frozen music. Rudolf Steiner saw that we live in an age when the human soul is sufficiently stiff and proclaimed the challenge of bringing the frozen forms back into musical movement and life. That, he said, is the underlying reason we do not have a rotunda, but a single axis of symmetry along which the motifs progress. The auditorium is surrounded by three levels of sculptural processes. In the bases, the metamorphosis simply rises and then falls. In the capitals, it is more complex, with the mutual transformation of a force from above and a force from below. In the architrave, the forces flow sideways as well. The successive stages are less clearly articulated. The arch leitmotif develops in varying repetition. There are six arches between the seven columns. The arch above the balcony has different dimensions and frames the series, along with the proscenium arch. The architrave shows the asymmetry of the supporting forces from the unequal columns, which grow in length and thickness from west to east. We shall view the south side of the auditorium, which develops from right to left. The motif shows the transition from the upright forces of the columns to the curving forces of the dome above. It stands straight atop the first column. Above the second, it hovers, rounded at the ends, and slightly curved. The first arch is closed, the second open toward the east. The third, introverted, folding in on itself which endangers the sensitive point at the vertex of the arch. Then the last three develop a centering tendency at the vertex. In the fourth, that same place develops a crossing The fifth is open to the east, asymmetrical. The sixth makes an enveloping gesture again, but now with a kernel. Thus the first three arches emphasize the static forces of the periphery the last three, the dynamic forces of the center. The first three are more separate, the last three more connected. The first three are concave, receiving the beholder into their movement. The last three convex, engaging the beholder in the activity of shaping. Likewise, the
the simple upper zone of the architrave is concave above the first half and convex above the second. The first three arches show a simple downward gesture. The last three, a complex flow from above. The first three have the bodily quality of sheaths. The last three, the spiritual quality of beings, who perhaps are not yet fully worked out. Above the last four columns, independent figures appear, with a rudimentary predisposition toward the qualities of the higher members of man from the eye to spirit man, as introduced in the presentation on the members of man's being. The first arch shows the simple curves of the western arch, just beginning to tilt. The last shows the keystone as an emancipated center, preparing the proscenium arch. In the words of the foundation stone mantram, the whole sweep says, let from the east be fired what through the west forms itself. Thou livest in the beat of heart and lung, which leads thee through the rhythm of time, in the encircling round, in world rhythms. In the mighty strides of the seven columns, thou livest in the limbs which bear thee through the world of space, connecting the heights and the depths of worlds. Let from the heights ring forth what in the depths its echo finds. And in the painted ceiling above the auditorium, Thou livest in the reposing head, which from grounds of eternity opens to thee the world thoughts. The architrave above the stage has a concave upper zone in the east, plunging in the west to make way for a more convex shaping, which you can see here on the left. Here there are only six columns on each side. The architrave, like the stage space in general, is calmer than that in the auditorium. Above the first four columns, seven shapes appear. The three in the east, here to the right, are undeveloped. The fourth stands independent, holding its own center. The three in the west are sheaths surrounding a center with forces of desire, of symbiotic nourishment, and of enclosure, always sustained from above. On the south side, Rudolf Steiner sculpted the threefold central form himself.
after the fourth column, if you count them from east to west, the rest of the architrave is scarcely visible to the audience because of the curve of the space. There, the shapes seem upside down, as if underground or ultraviolet outside the visible spectrum. This hidden part of the architrave is missing in the recapitulation. The recapitulation of the stage architrave appears in the baldachin, the canopy above the central niche at the back of the stage. Here is a sketch of the architrave for comparison. Only the seven eastern forms are recapitulated. Here is the baldachin above the niche. The baldachin is made of ash wood. The architraves, as you may have noticed in the photographs, are of various woods, changing above each column. The sequence is the same as in the seven columns of the auditorium. The westernmost arch above the organ is hornbeam. From ash to birch, the eastern and western sequences run symmetrically, and the proscenium arch is again of birch.